Welcome to our latest adventure. Today we explore further Hildebrand adventures from Heavensward, part one. Hey everyone, and welcome to the Eorzean Archons. I'm Faze. And I'm Catherine. This video will cover the further Hildebrand adventures quest through the measure of a mammoth. There will be no spoilers in this video after the Heavensward expansion. Remember to subscribe and click the bell icon if you'd like to be notified of future videos. Let's get started. Faze, the mail's here. Thanks, Moogle Mail. We just got a letter. 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 I wonder who it's from. It's a letter from our friends. You know, I really think we'll need your help today to figure out where Hildebrand has run off to. Will you help us? You will? Well, it looks like we're off on another adventure. Nashu is on the hunt for Hildebrand. After our last mystery, he was sent flying through the heavens, and according to Nashu's calculations, he must have landed here in Ishgard. She asks us to help her track him down by asking some of the local merchants. We ask around, but only one of the merchants has heard of the gentlemanly Highlander. Elaise tells us that a foreigner by that description has entered Ishgard by request of Lord Edmund of House Four Temps. A night outside House Four Temps confirms that they have a foreigner guest currently meeting with Lord Edmund. Should we like to see if it's our friend Hildebrand, we can wait outside in the gazebo. Seems as though Nashu has never seen a gazebo before, because she thinks it's a dangerous beast of some sort. After what feels like ages in the cold, we finally hear the door open, only to find the gentlemanly Highlander is none other than Godbert, Hildebrand's father. He's here to talk commerce and trade with Count Edmund de Fortemps. Before we can catch up, an Inquisitor calls out to Godbert, asking him to surrender for his brazen heresy. Lord Edmund puts the Inquisitor in his place, explaining Godbert to be a guest of House Four Temps. After some mumbling to himself, the Inquisitor apologizes and introduces himself as Seer. He's been charged with investigating reports of a rather suspicious, possibly heretical individual. The man in question is rather muscular, wearing dark garments and conducting himself in a gentlemanly fashion. Seeing as this man is clearly looking for Hildebrand, we strike an agreement with him that we'll look for Hildebrand together and hopefully be able to put this heresy talk to rest without incident. Seer tells us that our target was first seen at Falcon's Nest, so we head off at once. Over at the Falcon's Nest, we ask a guard about the sighting. He explains that our mysterious muscular vagabond was seen out near the Dusk Vigil. Best put on some warm clothes, it's cold out there. When we arrive at the Dusk Vigil, we spot a gentleman, but it turns out it's one of Hildebrand's gentle dead men. Seer obviously has a heart attack at the sight of a zombie. The gentle dead man explains he's heard rumors of an abandoned fortress held by zombies out here, and he's the acting emissary on behalf of the gentle dead men of Ulda. Unfortunately for him, all the undead here are dead dead. Like, for good. Nashu is dismayed not to find Hildebrand here. But fret not, we just so happen to be talking to a founder of the gentle dead men. His fate and Aether are inextricably entwined with their overlord, so much so that he can feel it calling to him now. Zombie Radar! Godbert appears to be slowly shedding clothes the further into the cold we go. Should I tell him this outing isn't a strip show? Nah, as weird as it is, I'm enjoying Seer's discomfort far too much. We follow the gentle dead man until he asks us to stop, as he needs to concentrate for a moment. He claims to have narrowed down the area of Master Zombie Brand, but he also senses a powerful magic, confounding his senses. Because of this, he's unable to guide us any further, so we must split up and search the rest of the area for Hildebrand. Continuing east, we spot Hildebrand surrounded by yetis, or as Nashu calls them, gazebos. The gentle dead man adds that they are no mere gazebos, but gentlemen gazebos. Okay, now we're just making up names. We put down the yetis just in time to save the inspector. However, he's frozen stiff in the ground and no amount of pulling can get him out. All the commotion draws Seer and Godbert over. As we see Godbert step up to wake up his son from his nap, we all back away slowly. Well, except for poor Seer, who has no idea what's surely about to happen. In a flash, Godbert changes into his battle attire to eliminate that wind resistance and grabs hold of Hildebrand, lifting him straight into the air high above Corthus. On the way down, Godbert meteor drives him straight into the same spot, burying him even deeper than before. Giving it one more go, this time without the obscene power, Godbert lifts out Hildebrand from the snow, but along with him comes a small mage in a big hat. Ah! A Lalafell! Wait, hold up. That's no Lalafell. It's a machine, or a black mage mammoth if I had to guess. Hmm, I feel like I've seen it before somewhere. Wait, I know!
As Hildebrand greets his friends and fans alike, Seer questions the lack of logical explanations for the events that have unfolded. Oh boy, he's in for a wild ride. Seer looks to the mammoth now and asks where it came from. Hildebrand says he found it beneath the snow when he fell back in. Hildebrand suspects it to be a Lullafell boy, while Nashu thinks it to be a girl. While we debate the gender of the mammoth, Godbert smacks it with his goldsmithing hammer, activating the mage. GGGGGGG. It questions where it is and who it is. Hildebrand concludes that while Godbert brought him back to life, he did so at the cost of his memory. Understanding what it is to lose one's memory, Hildebrand swears to help him remember, solving the mystery of the amnesic Hobbledehoy. Only this time, Nashu's bombs can't be used on someone lacking the constitution of a Monderville. Instead, they must find an alternate approach to help Gigi. Yes, Hildebrand decides to call this mammoth by the startup sound it made. Seer points out that all mammoths make that sound on startup, but hey, learn your place, Inquisitor. Gigi's happy to have a name, but asks how it'll help him remember who he really is. First things first, we need to get out of the cold, so we decide to head for Ishgard. However, Godber and the gentle dead man are needed back in Thanalan, so they part ways from the group. As we start to head back, Seer tells us that Hildebrand won't be able to access the capital until he has proven not to be a heretic by the loosely defined law. Let's hope he can get through customs just fine. As we leave the Corthus Western Highlands, we can't help but feel like we're being watched. A feeling all too familiar. As we arrive in Ishgard, Seer reports that Hildebrand was cleared of all suspicion and judged to be no more than an eccentric curiosity. Though after being cleared by the Temple Knight, he and Nashu ran all over town with Gigi in tow. As for Seer's work, he told the Inquisition that the suspicious vagabond he was searching for was not more than a zombie which wandered away from Dusk Vigil. Seer seems to think that all is right in the world again as the sickness has been purged. I'm sure we'll talk again soon, when Hildebrand, I mean trouble, comes knocking. And soon enough it does, as Seer reaches out, asking for our help. He has been tasked this time with investigating Gigi, Hildebrand's new mammoth. Should he find even a bit of heresy, whatever that means in the context, he is to destroy Gigi. Seeing no harm in the inquiry, we go around town looking for Hildebrand and his mammoth. We find him over by the gazebo from earlier, teaching Gigi the ways of the Manderville. Seer wastes no time getting to business. By the authority vested in him, he commands Hildebrand to relinquish Gigi over to be tested for heresy. Hildebrand brushes off the command, taking it as a joke. I mean, look at Gigi. He's not capable of heresy. All the talk of heresy in the courtyard draws out Count Edmond de Fortemps from his home. Seer tries to explain how he's only trying to prevent such heresy. Meanwhile, Hildebrand and Nashu argue over if Gigi is more masculine or feminine. Hildebrand turns to ask Lord Edmond if he thinks Gigi to be a boy or a girl. Ignoring the claims of heresy, Lord Edmond says Gigi looks to be a strapping young lad. Seer sulks and tries again to explain how even if Gigi is a real boy, the very circumstances that led to his discovery warrant an investigation for potential heresy before he can even be left to Rome in Ishgard. Lord Edmund suggests that, until Gigi recovers its memory, Hildebrand should adopt Gigi into House Manderville. Surely the Inquisitors would think twice about claiming heresy on a House member, especially one allied with House Fortemps. And with that, Hildebrand becomes a father. Papa Hildi! I'm not sure Hildebrand is mature enough to become a father figure. I mean, Godbert raised Hildebrand just fine. Actually, wait, I see your point. With the Inquisitors off our back, we are free to show Gigi all of Ishgard. Hopefully something will spark his memory. As we join the touring parade, we observe as Hildebrand butchers every house's name as he tries to point out the major buildings of Ishgard. Seer can't help but butting in to correct Hildebrand, telling him House Durinmel Tempersar is not a real name just a combination of all the four high houses. Maybe showing Gigi the chocobo stables of Ishgard would better jog its memory. However, it doesn't seem to faze him any more than the rest of Ishgard. Seer points out that just because we found Gigi in Corthus doesn't mean he's from Ishgard. Hmm, how true. We should show him the markets and let him sample the goods across all of Eorzea. As we leave the markets, Gigi sees a spoiled brat complaining to his father. The kid notices Gigi and calls him strange looking before walking away. Poor Gigi wonders if he really is strange looking as he catches up with the group. Over at the market, Hildebrand shows Gigi every fine craft the streets of Ishgard has to offer. Though, nothing seems to speak to Gigi. With a promise to continue helping, Hildebrand poses next to one of the stalls, knocking over an antique vase in the process. He tries to play off the extremely expensive mistake, but while we're all in a panic, Gigi casts a spell on the vase, restoring it to its original condition. A marvel in front of our very eyes, though Gigi doesn't even know how he did it. He's ironically a craftsman, 
just like Papa Hildy's papa. Seer is convinced he witnessed a miracle and the shopkeeper offers us the vase and a hundred million gil for the mammoth. Hmm, the house I could buy with that gil. Gigi is saddened, bleeding that everyone thinks of him as a mammoth. Hildebrand reassures Gigi that he is his family, his own flesh and blood. Which is not exactly true, but sure. Gigi doesn't accept Hildebrand's words and storms off, saying Hildebrand and Nashu are not his real parents. Ah, <sighs> kids in their rebellious stage. Hildebrand understands that Gigi is going through a lot right now and vows to be the best father he can be by going to look for his son. Seer suggests that we speak with the sentries stationed at the city gates and airship landing to make sure that Gigi didn't leave Vishgard. Figuring it a good suggestion, we split up and look for our missing mammoth. One of the guards we talked to mentioned seeing a little fellow with a wide-brimmed hat a short while ago, who bought passage on a supply ship bound for Falcon's Nest. We regroup with Hildebrand, Nashu, and Seer to tell them of our discovery. Why it's so obvious? Hildebrand states Gigi went to frolic in the snow and cast his worries to the wind. Or maybe he remembered who he was and went back to his masters of heresy like Seer suggests. Regardless of why he left, we go looking for him in the snowy fields of Korthus Western Highlands. After some searching, we manage to find Gigi's tracks in the snow, leading us further and further from Falcon's Nest. Perhaps he was eager to meet his grandparents and went off to find Godbert? Hildebrand, that's silly. Why would... Oh my. Is that who I think it is? By some sixth sense, Hildebrand was right. Out in the snowy fields, we find Gigi, snow stuck to his head, lying on the ground. Just past them are Godbert and Julian, Gigi's grandparents, having a snowball fight and accidentally killing wildlife in the process. As a Manderville, Gigi just has to get used to taking blows to the head, it would seem. As Gigi gets back up, he asks his grandpapa Godbert to make him a real boy. Nashu may have told Gigi that Godbert can wield the powers of life and death. Accepting the task, Godbert transforms into his work attire and readies his hammer. Seer has learned from his past mistakes and begins to back up. With a precise touch, Godbert crafts the once mammoth into a real boy with the body of a Lollafell. But wait, his work is not done. By Bygod's blessing, he crafts further until Gigi has the boy of a muscular Rogadin. With his new body, he cries out for his father as Hildebrand and Gigi run to embrace each other. A beautifully awkward moment reaches its peak entertainment as while Hildebrand goes in for the hug, Gigi hits him with a clothesline. I guess he doesn't know his own strength. Thankfully, it won't be a problem, as shortly after burying Hildebrand, Gigi's magic restores him back to his original form, much like the vase from earlier. Becoming a mammoth again saddens Gigi, for how can he be Hildebrand's son if he isn't a real boy? Hildebrand tells him that it isn't flesh and bones that make a Manderville, it's the vigor, compassion, and honor. Gigi is Manderville through and through. Godbert is glad to hear that he has a grandson, but Julian isn't so excited. In fact, she goes into a primal rage over the idea of a mammoth being the reason she becomes a grandmother already. While the Mandervilles make their grand exit, Seer cowers in fear at the blatant heresy he just witnessed. He questions the sanity of the Mandervilles and how a mammoth could have undergone and resolved an existential crisis. As we walk our troubled friend back to Ishgard, I can't help but feel like we're still being watched. Back in Ishgard, Seer tells us that his superiors have gotten word of Gigi's acceptance into House Manderville, but they have doubled down on their demand to investigate him for heresy. While Seer doesn't share the belief of heresy, he is curious as to the miraculous abilities Gigi has shown us. Perhaps we should reopen the investigation into who this Mandervillian mammoth truly is. Hey Cat, we have all three clues. You know what that means. We're ready to sit in our... Archon chair. Right. Okay. Now that we're in our Archon chair, let's think. You will help, right? Great! Okay, so we're trying to figure out what Gigi really is. And our clues are a mammoth in the snow, a vase restored, and a desire to be a real boy. So who is Gigi really? Well, maybe Gigi was a real boy in another life where he could control magic. But how did he end up here in the snow? Maybe he's from another world entirely. What, what do, do you, you think? think? Be sure to thumbs up and hit the subscribe button down below. Click the bell to be notified of future videos. What did you enjoy or not enjoy about the further Hildebrand adventure quest? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.